Hello, and welcome to the 2013 ASME Human Powered Vehicle Challenge Safety Briefing. Let me start off by introducing myself. My name is Chris Wilson, and I'm the new Chief Judge of the competition. I am very excited to be part of this competition, and I hope that I'll be able to improve your HPVC experience this year with some new changes to the event. Thank you for showing an interest in the ASME HPVC and the passion to create high-performance, human-powered vehicles that are efficient, innovative, and safe. The goal of this safety briefing is to highlight some of the most important safety aspects of the competition while focusing on particular points that can often be overlooked. Through this short presentation, I will briefly cover the following topics which are paramount to the safety of all the participants, volunteers, and spectators of the event. Let us begin by looking at the different performance criteria. These three performance criteria will all be tested on the Friday of the event to ensure that all teams can compete in a safe manner. If teams do not pass the performance criteria tests, they will not be allowed to race. The three tests are as follows. A stability test, a turning radius test, and a braking test. The specifications of these three tests are outlined in the 2013 rules, and I will also briefly discuss them when introducing each section of this video. We will then discuss the rollover protection system. Specifically, I will cover the load case requirements, the testing requirements, the analysis portion, and the inspection we will be performing on the roll bar to ensure that it is safe at the competition. And finally, we will cover some pertinent general safety information. First, we'll start off with the stability test. The rules state that each vehicle must demonstrate stability by traveling for 30 meters in a straight line at a speed of 5 to 8 kilometers per hour, or in 98.4 feet at a speed of 3 to 5 miles per hour, which is basically a fast walking pace. In order to test this, we will set up a 30 meter straight section of track that each team must drive down in a controlled and straight manner while traveling at that fast walking speed of between 5 and 8 kilometers per hour, as demonstrated in this video. The purpose of this test is to prove that each vehicle is controllable and stable at low speeds and will not pose a hazard to its driver or other vehicles on the course. Now we will move on to the turning radius test. The rules state that each vehicle must demonstrate that it can turn within an 8 meter or 26.2 foot radius. In order to test this, we will set up an 180 degree half circle of markers. These markers will most likely be standard orange cones, much like what can be seen in this video. There will be a few lead-in cones on each side that will ensure the team's approach tangent to the turn, and a cone will be positioned in the center of the half circle of cones to indicate the point at which teams will be turning about. To complete the test, all teams have to do is make the 180 degree turn within the outside ring of cones, but about the center cone. This task is relatively easy for most standard upright bikes, as you can see here. But do remember that when designing a low slung recumbent, lean trike, or any other HPV with atypical geometry, this can be a very challenging test. At this time I would like to take a brief minute to discuss the slalom, which is one of the obstacles that teams will have to navigate during the endurance race. Our target slalom setup has a longitudinal cone spacing of 30 feet with a lateral cone offset of 5 feet, as depicted here. In the past, there has been some confusion about the slalom course layout, but in an effort to resolve that, we are presenting this as the target slalom setup. Though, dependent on the facility of each course, we may have to modify this slightly. Teams should be prepared for a course similar to, or even exactly like, as described and demonstrated here. The final criteria that will be tested during the safety inspection is the braking distance requirement. Please note that this criteria has changed since previous years, and just to reiterate, each team must pass this test in order to compete in the racing portions of the competition. The new 2013 rules state that each vehicle must demonstrate that it can come to a stop from a speed of 25 km per hour in a distance of 6 meters, or roughly 15.5 miles per hour in a distance of 19.7 feet. In order to test this, we will set up two parallel lines, 6 meters apart, they will be perpendicular to the direction of runup. Teams can use as much runup as they would like to achieve the 25 km per hour speed which will be required and confirmed by a radar gun. Teams must start braking no sooner than they cross the first line and must come to a complete stop before they reach the second line. This test may sound easy to complete, 
but it can be fairly challenging if not carefully designed for. Also, please note that we do not require multiple or redundant brakes, but you are required to meet this criteria however you determine fit. At this time, I will discuss the rollover protection system. The RPS is essential to the safety of the driver in the event of a collision, and it is a high priority of the ASME HVVC judging team that every vehicle is equipped with a well-designed, solidly constructed, and safe RPS. The requirements of the RPS are outlined in the 2013 rules, but I'll briefly discuss some critical points regarding the RPS that are often overlooked or misunderstood by competitors. The load case requirements are outlined in the 2013 rules in Section 3, Subsection C, Bullet 1. Specifically outlined are the two load cases that must be covered simulating if the vehicle was completely inverted or on its side and the driver was suspended from the harness. The RPS is not just a roll bar, but an entire system which includes the roll bar, frame, seat, and rider attachment points. In order for a team to get full credit for the RPS analysis and testing, it is mandatory that the team approach the problem as a system and not just as an analysis or testing of the roll bar itself. When performing the analysis on the RPS, do not introduce unnecessary complexity. Focus on defining a model which encompasses the entire system, and feel free to simplify components which do not need to be designed like a commercially available harness. The analysis of the RPS must show that the RPS is fully compliant with both load cases if full points are to be awarded. In order to achieve full points for the testing section, the same steps taken to model the RPS as a system in the analysis portion should be taken. Teams must test both load cases to the target load or greater to achieve the full points, but teams are not required to test a failure. Again, as similar to the analysis, the goal is not to drive unnecessary complexity into the testing approach, but to make teams more aware that testing of the RPS is not just testing the roll bar. And finally, a few tips about on-site inspection of the RPS. Make sure that your RPS follows all safety points outlined for all other aspects of the vehicle. Your RPS must fit the largest driver and not allow said driver to touch the ground in the event of a crash. The RPS must appear to the judges as being robust and well secure using strong fabrication techniques. The judging team reserves the right to disallow any vehicle with an unsafe RPS from competing in the racing events unless modifications recommended by the judges are made prior to racing. Though this may sound like an authoritarian decree, it is really in the best interest of the drivers as a very serious accident can and will likely take place if a substandard RPS is used. The final topic we will cover in the safety briefing is general safety. Please keep the following points in mind when designing and constructing your vehicles. Make sure to plug and cover all open tube ends as they can be a real hazard in the event of a collision. Make sure to cover, pad, or sand down any and all sharp edges that might be exposed to the driver while racing. Avoid or cover all pinch points. These can be caused by any components moving past each other and are often caused by the drivetrain. This brings us to our next point. Please protect the driver from the drivetrain. This could be done with covers, guards, or even protective clothing. And make sure to protect accordingly for road abrasion that may be experienced if the vehicle crashes and slides along the pavement. When racing, please be mindful of the following points. Be aware of all hazardous road conditions and avoid them when possible. Please take caution when passing another vehicle, especially when it's in a narrow section of track or if another vehicle is down. And make sure to always obey all flags that are on the course. And finally, make sure to always wear a helmet when riding any human-powered vehicle. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the safety briefing. I hope it has been informative and increased your awareness of the safety expectations that will be upheld during the ASME Human Powered Vehicle Challenge. Good luck, have fun developing your vehicles, and I will see you at the competition.